So let's carry on with the second video. We have stopped with the, with the, uh, the troublesome verbs that we have studied together, and a lot of people they have they have a lot of troubles with the, the troublesome verbs. So let me go back to the PowerPoint here, and uh, let's revise the meaning of each verb we have studied. Here we have sit and set. We have sit. The simple past is sat, and the past participle is sat. It means to sit down, and I don't think that this verb <coughs> will make any trouble to us. Alhamdulillah. So, because it's too easy, okay, to differentiate between the two verbs, we have sit, which means to sit down, and we have set. Of course, here it's an I, not an E. Okay, let me open. Yes, here to uh, yes to sit down. So, the simple past of to sit is sat, and the past participle is sat too. And uh, we have talked about the past participle. We said that we use the past participle with uh, the present perfect this year and the past perfect. And then we have sit, sit, sit. It doesn't change, so pay attention. They are not the same verb. That's why we call them a troublesome verb or troublesome verbs, because they almost have the same spelling but they have of course different meanings so uh, pay attention when uh, to use uh, sit and when to use uh, sit uh, with the uh, e okay to sit is to sit down and uh, to sit is to put or to place just like uh, the example we have in the revision shit then we have to lie and to lay okay the problem with to lie and to lay is that the past of to lie is lay itself Okay, so let's pay attention. Here we have to lie is to rest in a place. Okay, when I lie in a place, I'm going to rest in that uh, place. Okay, however, to lay it means to put, lay the books on the shelf, for example, or lay the books on the table, which means put the books on the table or uh, put the books on uh, the shelves or, or on the shelf. Of course, some students they ask me, so teacher, how am I going uh, to find the difference between uh, uh, lay and lay, it's the same verb, the same spelling. How am I going to choose uh, this? Okay, so here we have lay in the simple past. For example, if I say, Yesterday I lay on the ground, it means this lay because I have passed and I'm going to lay on the ground, I'm going to rest on the ground. However, when I say, uh, uh, Every day or every week I lay, I lay the books. Uh, on the table at school, okay, it means uh, this lay, okay, so lie here, the past is uh, lay and the past participle is lay, and lay here, the past is laid and the past participle is uh, lay, then we have uh, let and leave, and that I don't think that let and leave would make any, uh, any trouble, I have already said that I don't consider let and leave troublesome, uh, Verbs, okay, they uh, they they don't even have uh, uh, the same meaning or uh, a close meaning. You see, so let in the simple past is let, and past participle is let. Leave is an an irregular verb too. It's gonna be uh, left and uh, left. So to let someone to do something is to allow him to do it, and to leave a place is to go away from a place. The simple past of leave is left, and uh, the simple past of uh, let is let and the past participle is let. However, the sentence that we're going to have now with the... Uh, let me just uh, finish with this PowerPoint. Uh, the sentence here that we have, it's not about going away. It has a different meaning in a way, okay? When you say, do you have any money left with you? It means, do you have any money uh, like uh, uh, inside your pockets to help me with, okay? Do you have any... Hey, Grandpa, do you have any teeth left inside the, inside your mouth? It means, uh, do you still have any uh, teeth? So this is a way uh, where we, we're going to uh, choose, of course, left. My Grandpa hasn't got many uh, teeth left, okay? So, here I have never lied to my father, okay, and lie, of course, it has the meaning of not telling the truth to, not only uh, uh, of resting on the ground, okay. Then, yesterday, in spite that she sat, yesterday, okay, in spite that she sat next to me, some people are going to say, yes, yesterday, what's going on, teacher, 
we can use set because set in the simple past is going to be set but here we have the meaning of sitting next to someone as you can see it it's too obvious okay i didn't recognize her choose the correct answer the man in the red in the red car given me more information about uh, the noun in a sentence and it's going to start with a preposition it's gonna be a ver uh, an adverb or an adjective if it's going to uh, talk about a verb it's going to be uh, an adverb it's go if uh, it's going to be playing the role of an adverb and if it's going uh, uh, to be talking about a noun it's going to be playing the role of uh, an adjective that's and it starts with a preposition of course what we're talking about is the prepositional phrase. So, the man in the red car here is asking for help. So, uh, uh, all of it in the red car is the prepositional phrase. Let me find the object of the preposition. It's going to be car, of course. Not, I don't care about uh, the adjectives. Uh, we only care about the word that we cannot omit the essential word coming to uh, describe here we have a noun so it's playing the prepositional phrase is playing the role of an adjective given more information or describing the noun in the sentence here as you can see there are two kids on the sled okay so the prepositional phrase is going to be on the sled okay the preposition is on sled only sled is going to be the object of the preposition even the do not take it okay so on here is a preposition okay let's move forward he is standing on the snow behind the tree so all of it the prepositional phrase is on the snow okay so uh, uh, the preposition is on snow is the object of the preposition of course here and on the snow is a prepositional phrase uh, my black cat with white paws is under the bed okay uh, here we have under this is the prepositional phrase all of it under the bed okay so here we have under it's the preposition so bed only bed is the object of the preposition let's move forward match the words match the words to uh, the appropriate synonym and the appropriate spelling of course here we have summer squash zucchini you remember that yes summer squash is zucchini it's a kind of vegetables okay the green long vegetables so summer squash it's gonna be a uh, uh, I zucchini this is the way we spell zucchini the correct way then we have uh, a foe is an opponent a person against you in a in a team or in a, a game so this is the way we write opponent the correct way of writing opponent then we have a group of people G it's a committee and this is the correct way we write committee okay with double M not with only one M because we are uh, studying about double consonants then we have to succeed it's to accomplish I have said that uh, when we accomplish something we succeed in doing uh, something okay to succeed is to accomplish then when uh, you declare something uh, you announce it uh, I announce today that grade 5 are great students I'm declaring something see and uh, uh, this is the, the right way of uh, writing announce not b it's uh, c thank you so much all of you if you have any questions please send it to me on whatsapp or classera i'm going to be glad to help you thank you so much wish you good luck tomorrow pay attention revise the worksheet the reading worksheet the revision worksheet the pay the pages on uh, on uh, on the books that we have mentioned on uh, the weekly plan, the last weekly plan, weekly plan number three, and this video. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow, God willing. Goodbye.